If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, tw- on. Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her, and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about- As promised, I asked if you guys wanted some more receipts to the claims that Cat Williams have been putting out. Y'all asked for it? I'm delivering. Let's go. Can't say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like, I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things like... Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? Well, I responded to him the way he responded to me, because, but that's what I said as well. I've seen Cat, you know, even before then. Right. I've seen this guy 30 times. Like, dog, if you literally was that... Upset about, about it. it, like dog. Just kept him and say, "Hey, yeah, hey, why say, can't say you stole one of his jokes." Yeah, like I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things. Like, did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? Well, I responded to him the way he responded to me, because, but that's what I said as well. I've seen Cat, you know, even before then. Right. I've seen this guy thirty times. Like, dog, if you literally was that. Upset, upset about, about it. it, like dog. Just why kept him and say, "Hey, yeah, hey, why say, it? say nothing?" Hey. Like that don't even make sense. This is this is some internet shit, and uh, that's all I can say. So, you know, when I responded to him, he didn't respond back to me, and I left it at that. Do you feel that uh, someone else has stolen some of your material? Oh, that, that's a part of this business, right? Like, you know, and I think that you know sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's not. Right. Okay. Cedric said that he didn't steal the joke. If y'all don't know about the joke in question, which I'm sure y'all probably do if y'all been paying attention to the internet in the last 48 hours, is this one right here. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. What do y'all think about what we just saw? In my honest opinion, I don't believe that Cat stole that joke from Cedric the Entertainer. So what could that mean? He gonna walk up and introduce himself. John Johnson, man. Everybody around here call me Bobby Nish, though. Everybody around here call me Bobby Nish. It's fine. You call me that. Don't even worry about it. Everybody call me Bobby Nish. He gonna walk up and introduce himself. Child Johnson, man. Everybody around here call me Bobby Nish, though. Everybody around here call me Bobby Nish. It's fine. You call me that. Don't even worry about it. Everybody call me Bobby Nish. Everybody call you Bobby Nish. Yeah, everybody in the whole city call me Bobby Nish. Don't even worry about it. It's fine. You call me that. Don't even worry about it. Bobby Nish. This is what everybody call Yeah, everybody call me that, man. Don't worry about it. I'm like, all right. So all week long, my ass talking about Bobby Nish. What up, boy? Hey, Bumma Nish, you gonna run around, come over and walk, watch the game with us later on. Hey, Bumma Nish, run to the store, grab some beer, come on back. My cousin said, what you calling him? <laughs> Bumma Nish? He said, everybody call him Bumma Nish. It's all right for me to call him that. Like, nah, man, it ain't CJ. He's saying you could call me by my initials. That's what he's saying. The only way that I can answer that question is by telling the Bominicious story. It's a true story. See, there was this white family that lived in Mississippi, and they had this man who worked for them occasionally named Bominicious. And he did various small jobs for them on and off for about a week. One night, he had just finished bartending a party, and the lady of the house realized that she didn't have any money. So she said to him, Bominicious, I-, I want to write you a check, but I, I don't know how to spell Bominicious. He said, well, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. See, when I came to work for you, I told you my name, and then I said, but you can call me by my initials. <laughs> Just because a joke might have been told on a television show 20, 30 years prior don't mean that folks won't know where you got the joke from when you get on stage and tell it later as if it was yours the chris tucker that we got now is epstein island chris tucker oh, not smoky oh lord <laughs> what do you mean by that this statement 
from Cat Williams was one of the realest statements from his interview. As you can see here, Chris Tucker was on Jeffrey Epstein's flight log. He was on a flight with President William J. Clinton, none other than Bill Clinton himself. He was on the flight with Kevin Spacey. There you can see his name, Chris Tucker, Jeffrey Epstein, and Ghislaine Maxwell. And as you can see here in this picture, it's Chris Tucker with one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims. Like this picture speaks for itself. That's not even to mention just the people on the flight itself are really suspicious. Like Kevin Spacey, we know all the allegations with him and what has went on. And of course, we cannot forget about good old Bill Clinton. Like his name has already been mentioned in the Jeffrey and Epstein drop of information. And we've seen plenty of pictures and heard so much about him. You can guarantee that this flight was for nothing good, nothing for no organization or anything like that. It's just straight out creepy. So I can guarantee you that we're going to hear more about Chris Tucker and Jeffrey Epstein in the upcoming days as they release this information. But drop in the comments and tell me what you guys think of all this and Cat Williams' statement on Chris Tucker because I think it's all so, so real. <laughs> Are you okay? Greg Grant, Grant, Atlanta Comedy. Tell Wanda to take sure, off them headphones and, and that sure, wig. And make sure. The wig and the headphones come together. And take off them old ass clothes you got on. How about that? Yeah, they're old. Versace, yeah. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it Versace. I want to apologize to the people at Versace Collection. <laughs> Since your 2019 but, summer line that hasn't come but, but, out. But you had but, to open it. I wanted to. No, I didn't have to open it up. These people are on radio. They can't see anything. Man, you gotta love the way this man responds to stuff. She gonna sit there and tell him that his clothes is old. And he's like, look, I would like to thank the people over there at Versace for hooking your boy up with their summer collection 2019 that has yet to be released. <laughs> She over there hate when she can't afford it. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you opened up so we could see it. Yes, ma'am. Well, happy, happy, happy. And happy, and happy whatever for stores for the Black Lane Bryant. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Very oh, proud. Okay, let's Very play some proud. music real quick if we can. We going to a break real quick? Very All right, proud. cool. Cat is eating her up, boy. Go to a break. Shout out to Forever 21. Yeah. This collection. That's right. Shout out. They don't remember me for a while now, I'm right? I'm not the right one to Jones, though. Get this inmate out of here. If, if, if you can't get your blood pressure down, you can't call me down. <laughs> Snap. He's like, if you can't keep your blood pressure down, you can't calm me down. That's crazy. If your cholesterol is 600, whatever, little mama. I'm little mama's baby daddy. No, you little mama. Uh, yes, ma'am. And what are you? Cats like get it right. No, I'm little mama's baby daddy. That's that's what you call me. Oh, you little mama. Uh, yes, ma'am. And what are you, girl? <laughs> you see, just like Cat Williams said in the interview, they want to call a straight man gay and use it in a derogatory manner. You can't be cool with the gays, be in with the gays, love the gays, and then want to bash a, a straight man by calling him gay or insinuating that he's exhibiting some form of homosexuality. Probably shouldn't talk about sizes. No, that's okay. You're big on the radio. That's right. And you're, and you're big Turn in prison. Turn it down. And you're yes, big in prison. I've never been to prison. Uh, you have 19 felonies, time. no convictions. Yeah. Knock yeah. it off. Prison okay. and jail aren't the same. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Calm, calm no, 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 no. Only one of us has $12 calm, calm worth of jewelry on. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, $12. No, 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 no. That all is a man. If you want to if you want to have Wanda's jewelry, please uh, go to go sit go, go or quick trip at any point. If you buy two packs of Newport one hundred. They will give you everything Wanda has on right now for seven ninety nine, and it comes with a free car wash. Won't you come on down? She don't know who she went up against, do she? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Go the Shay, show starts at nine. Her. Wanda gets to the stage at nine seventeen. Uh, please Shay, come on down. Go Shay, please come get Miss Cat uh -huh. and do her She's hair. She's almost out. Of come get Miss Cat and do her hair. When they lose, what they do. They try to hit you with that low blow. And they think that by calling you feminine is going to give them the win. <laughs> Come get Miss Cat uh -huh. and do her She's hair. almost out of breath. Be careful now. <laughs> Even on the radio, you yeah. can hear the fact that exercise has crept into her vocabulary. Yeah. Hey, we have little mama. We're done. You already used that one. Don't yeah. repeat your jokes, Fresh Go ahead. Let's hear what Faison got to say about Cat, man.
This is where he tells on himself. Okay. He took a Come on now. tractor trailer after stopping in a tractor trailer lot, a truck stop, and aborted that truck. Come on, Faison. Speed it up. to Miami. Okay. He rode in the back of that truck mm -hmm. with a stranger. Mm-hmm. Now, back then, they had a saying, ass, grass, or gas. Okay. Nobody rides for free. Cat was giving up that ass to ride, that, take that ride. Because, look, a, a Greyhound only costs $20 to go, maybe for 50 bucks. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Y'all, I didn't know what this man was about to talk about, man. I just played a clip knowing good and well this man be sitting here talking about Cat Williams. Man, Cat Williams, he stated that when he day go hightail it to Miami, to Florida, when he was 13 years old, that he had about $2,500 in his pocket, money that he saved up doing little jobs. Who's to say that he didn't offer up some cash, gave somebody $100, $200 for that ride down to Florida? Come on now, Face Down, how you gonna sit here and tell a story about a 13-year-old boy giving up some tail for a ride down to Florida. I don't remember him mentioning that in his story. Now, I'm a fan of Faison. I went and saw him live in person, front row, close enough to smell his sweat as he sat there on the stage because he didn't do stand-up. He did sit down. Both times I went and saw him. Last year, the Atlanta Comedy Club. I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. Man, that's hilarious. But with everybody, a majority of the internet, majority of people in general being on cat side right now, if you're coming out making a statement and it's clear as heck that you're not on cat side, it's not going to look good for you. It's not going to look too good for you. If you do it for real, here it is, Kevin. I got a show at Joe hometown in Philly. I'm going to take my special there. On that stage, we can put whatever you want. A full court basketball court. A boxing ring, two microphones for a rap cypher, or you can get your ass dusted in comedy on that stage. But it's one million dollars up for each one. That's five million dollars, Mr. 28 million in Forbes. I'll be bringing mine in cash, Mitch. Bring yours however you want. And since you're not a puppet, don't bring no white people with you then. That's a five million dollar bet individually. You can take it all, or you can take it part and parcel. See, this right here was prime example of Cat putting his money where his mouth is. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Uh, in man, twenty, listen, in twenty years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her, and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. Man, we definitely thought this man had the best lineup. It was like, how is this man hair so perfect? And it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. Then Yo, Steve Harvey had the first man unit. He had man units before man units were man units. It's the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over cable. And look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. No, um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing. And it had to be one or the other of us. And decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Now, <laughs> one person ended up with a light-skinned, ugly-faced wife that's never done a... Remember I told you that if I say that, it applied to seven people? Yeah. It's part of what they give you.
Okay. I- that's, that's crazy. This man is saying, they give you this. Like, oh, what you want? Oh, you want a light-skinned woman? Okay, we're going to give you a light-skinned woman to marry. Now, people's over here confused about what it is. They was like, wait, so is Cat Williams saying that he was supposed to be the one in all the Fast and the Furious movies? No, that's not what he was saying. What he was saying was there's an Illuminati meeting, and one of them was chosen between the two of them to be a part of it, and the other one had to go. Couldn't be a part of it. Had to find his own route. That's what he's saying. And look, I don't want nobody coming after me. So look, all this stuff is speculation. All this stuff is uphill. I, look, I ain't saying that I'm believing or disbelieving a thing that's coming out of this man's mouth. But I'm just showing y'all the receipts for the stuff that he's talking about. Stuff look look pretty solid to me. That's all I know. Who took his cell from him? Uh, Kelly Clarkson. How can Kelly Clarkson take your cell, homie? Hey, right, bro. Damn. You know, so, so, you got your cell took by it. Kelly Clarkson. You know what's crazy? Damn. I met my fiance on Steve's show, on Steve oh, really? Harvey's talk show. Yeah. So, so that's, that's another story. But I want to get back to that because I think that is the most new thing a comic can do. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Right. To me, right. to me, I, right. I step to you. Right? I'm going to step to you. You ever step to him? Yeah, step to him. What'd you say to him? Yeah, yeah. tell I mean, us about you know, that. Tell, ask him. So tell he me about said thank you. Uh, so what's up with you and Steve, man? Uh, I ain't nothing, ain't nothing with me. Uh, <laughs> well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the, the, the book talk show he had. And he did he he did all my Halloween material, one Halloween. I'm watching that. Like, somebody called me and said, man, homeboy doing your material. So he did my whole Halloween run. And I know he didn't think of it. And uh, this this is true stuff that really happened to me. Uh-huh. And so my thing is, you don't have to do that, homeboy. Yeah, right. So, you know, you made enough money. You know, <laughs> wow. you made enough money. You did enough. You know, wh- wh- why are you on my material? Right. You know, what's that about? You right. know, and then, you know, people want to jump up. Oh, he didn't know. He didn't steal your. So, yes, he did. Yeah. You know, so, you know. And so that that I, there's no need to do, no one else has did that. Mm-hmm. So, so this was on his talk show. Which talk was it? TV talk show. Yeah, TV talk show. Okay, this was uh, the one he had on NBC just recently. Whatever. Yeah, that, okay. the one that that. That's crazy. The fact that this man here, you got Mark Curry, have lived this experience. This was a lived experience for him. That he puts it out there in the form of a, a sketch, a comedy skit, or whatever, and then Steve goes behind and takes it. <laughs> How you gonna take somebody else's lived experience, man? That's crazy. You mean to tell me this man asked you if you ever decide not to be a man to to call it like that, and you was okay with that? You know, the time when you play a gay role, it's just to shut down black masculinity. It's to shut it down, to kill the alpha. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress. So Omar Gooding just stirred up some arguments on social media after claiming that straight black actors are pressured into doing gay roles as part of their contracts. Omar claimed that his career suffered because he refused these types of roles, and he called out actors who step on their principles for fame and money. And as you might remember, Omar isn't the first actor to talk about this. Dave Chappelle, Cat Williams, and Terrence Howard all previously claimed that there's an agenda in Hollywood to humiliate black men. And while some fans are praising Omar for... It used to be that that was a conspiracy theory, that there was an, an agenda in Hollywood. But here you have people who are of Hollywood telling you that no this is real some fans are praising omar for speaking out on this others are calling him ignorant and claiming he's spreading conspiracy theories but what exactly did omar say about hollywood pressuring black actors into gay roles let's get into it so what they say oh everybody puts on a dress not everybody mm-hmm. i see things they'll put on their lip gloss I ain't seen that boy do anything where I've been like, oh no you too omar gooding the older brother of cuba gooding jr Wait, what? I never knew that they were brothers. So you're telling me my boy from Smart Guy is brothers to... He is definitely not the older brother. Look how old... (laughs) He's the younger brother, I believe that, but not older brother. Junior had a lucrative career as a child actor and was one of the original hosts of the Nickelodeon show Wild and Crazy Kids from 1990 to 1992. Yeah, that right there is proof that he's the younger brother. Omar later appeared in a number of hit TV shows like Deadwood, Family Time, Barbershop, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Playmakers, and Smart Guy. 
still, despite his talent, Omar never managed to get that leading man title in big budget Hollywood movies. And according to Omar, that's because he said no too many times when offered to play gay characters. Good. Now, to be clear, Omar believes that straight actors are not literally forced to do gay roles, and they still have the power to say no. However, he said that most actors aren't patient enough to wait for the right role and let their work speak for itself. And instead, they want that instant success. And in Hollywood, instant success allegedly comes with certain conditions in your contract. So this idea that Hollywood has an agenda to emasculate black men by pressuring them to play gay characters isn't exactly new. For you- oh, that, that makes perfect sense, man. This, it, this goes back to slavery. It's the same sort of thing. Where they try to emasculate black men to weaken the black family. So why not do it in Hollywood too? Rumors have been circulating. And then what do you see? What do we hear now more than ever, especially from black women? They so quick to want to call a straight man that does not identify as anything other than heterosexual. They so quick to want to call him gay. I bet Hollywood's over there like, hur, 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 hur. it worked. Years, rumors have been circulating that big shot Hollywood producers pressure black actors and comedians to wear dresses on screen before they're allowed to climb to that next level of fame. Dave Chappelle spilled the beans on this shortly after he turned down a $50 million contract from Comedy Central and escaped to Africa. After he returned, Dave appeared on The Oprah Show and explained that he didn't turn down the money, but rather the conditions that came with it. He then recalled an incident when the producers tried to pressure him into wearing a dress while filming a movie with Martin Lawrence. And when he said no, they tried to make him look crazy. Dave said the dress didn't even make sense for the scene. But then the director and the producers all ganged up on him, trying to pressure him into putting on the dress. They come in, the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, you got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you. <laughs> and he put this dress on and it out was it. They only backed down when they realized Dave wasn't going to change his mind. And they had another script ready, showing that the dress wasn't really needed. So basically, it was just a test to see if he'd bite. Now, fast forward to Kevin Hart, who, when asked about Dave's dress drama, laughed it off, saying he'd never do anything to compromise his brand. Uh, I definitely haven't ran in to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you, have to have, you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. You know, protecting my brand is, is definitely a priority. But then a few years later, Kevin showed up on SNL rocking a dress and suddenly his career blew up. That same year, Cat Williams was talking about this dress controversy while promoting Scary Movie 5. And he claimed that this is something that's been going on in Hollywood for years. So basically what I'm getting from this is that they can make whoever they want be a star as fast as they want them to be. But you got to do what they ask of you first. If they tell you to put on the dress, you better put on the dress. If they tell you to jump, you better ask how high. And as soon as you do, okay, cool. We're going to go ahead and put you at the top. You don't got to climb no ladders. We can put you up there because we got the power. We can make you out to be funnier than you actually are. Just by putting you at the top, people going to think you're funny. Putting you at the top, people going to think you're a great actor. You just got to do this one thing, this one simple thing for us first. And then that thing rolls onto another thing and another thing. And next thing you know, they slobbing on knobs like corn on the cob. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all today. Leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions down below. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. See ya.